Hello and welcome again, guys, to another Z Squared Academy video. Um, before we begin today, I just want to thank you guys for liking, sharing, subscribing to the channel, and to comment that you have to look thank you for all the comments. You know, thank you for all the engagement that you have had on these videos. And I'm happy that the videos are helping you guys. Um, uh, next, I want to say, yo, come on, guys, subscribe to the channel. We know that you are watching. We know that you're seeing the videos. We know that you are being helped by them. And all we're saying is just, you know, hit the subscribe button um, and uh, touch the post notification bell as well. So every time I drop a video, you can get, you know, they can be helped um, in your studies. So guess what? We're continuing our planning and designing series today. And today we're going to be looking at a carrot juice PD. All right. So without further ado, let us just dive right in. Okay. So. Carrot juice PD, as you can see there on the screen, right? Problem statement, Ariana notices that her mom soaks her carrots in water before making juice. She asked her mom why, and she said, because it produces more juice. Ariana decided to test if it was true, all right? So you're going to now plan a lab to help Ariana to find out if what her mom says is true. As usual, what's your hypothesis? Here you go now. The carrots will produce more juice after being soaked because they will absorb water. Now, if you have seen any of my previous videos, you notice that in my hypothesis, I didn't give a reason for why I said that. The hypothesis for why I did that stand. But you notice in this video, I did because this is more a biological um, lab. And in biology, CSEC biology, especially they or CXC biology, they want you to give a reason for your act a reason for the stance that you're taking. So that's why I gave a reason here, all right? So now we're gonna press on. As usual, you have your standard headings, G Squared Academy, this is lab number five. So if you have not seen the other videos, check them out, guys. All right, the date there, the plan and designing, the topic we're looking at, cells osmosis, you know? Um, and the aim here is to determine if carrots produce, um, carrots soaked in water will produce more. That's all we're trying to find out, okay? Um, before we proceed, I just want to say that I took a certain position on this lab because um, just soaking the carrots and not soaking carrots seem a little bit too simple for me. So I decided to do a little bit more, add more meat to the lab, you know, to show more thinking and more thought. So when your examiner sees this, they're saying, hey, you're really thinking about what you're doing. All right. So what are the things that we need? Well, we're definitely going to need carrots. We're going to need a balance measuring cylinder, um, a glass tank, paper towel, and uh, an oven. We're gonna need that. All right, so let's proceed. And here I'm pointing out to you guys, come on, that your tense, your tense must be in um, present command tense. It must be present command tense. And your method, of course, must be sequential and it must be feasible. If at the end of the lab it's not sequential and feasible, then hey, you're not going to get the marks for that. So gather all your apparatus and materials, right? Uh, you're going to weigh each carrot on the balance, and you're going to try to ensure each carrot weighs 200 plus or minus. It's going to be difficult to really get them to be the exact same weight. So that's why we have attached this arrow to the, um, to the mass of the carrot. Now you're going to place two carrots in the glass tank. Okay, we said two because we want to get a nice average. Measure 10 mils of water and pour onto the carrots. Leave the carrots soaking for five hours. Remove them and pat dry using paper towel. So then you're gonna reweigh the carrots and record the mass. Then you're gonna dry the carrots in the oven until a constant mass is achieved. Then you're gonna repeat steps two to eight using 20 mils to 100 mils of water, increasing by 10 mils each time. So, you know, you go from 10 mils to 20 mils to 30 mils and all of those you're gonna be soaking for five hours, okay? Of course, you don't need to wait until five hours to finish to do this. You can, if you have enough apparatus, you can set up for all of them, right? And then when the five hours is over, you would have everything all set good and ready. All right, so let us proceed now. Um, your variables, of course, you know, these are the things that affect your results. And uh, there are four of them here this time. So your first one, your manipulated variable, what we're changing, we're changing the volume of water added each time. Your responding variable, 
the mass of carrots at the end or the amount of juice produced. Since that what you're trying to find, the amount of juice produced is probably one that you go for more than likely. Then what do we need to keep constant? We need to keep the mass of the carrots, the volume of the water, the baking time, the soaking time. All of those things must be kept constant so our experiment is fair. And then now I'm introducing this new variable, um, which not really introducing, you have not seen it in any of the other labs that I've done. But if you watch my video on how to write and in the lab, you would see that I talk about um, all four of these variables. The control, which is what you're gonna compare your results to. So this would be two carrots of similar mass, similar mass um, without any water added, right? So that would be our control. Now, pressing on, expected results. Remember again, your expected results is based on your hypothesis. So you have to look at your hypothesis and say, okay, this is what I, um, I think is the answer. So what do I expect to observe, right? And of course, I always say it begins with expected. So it is expected that carrots with the greatest mass difference will be the ones soaked in 100 ml of water. And by mass difference, you're gonna see what we're talking about um, shortly. So what sort of data um, will we be collecting? All right, cool. As usual, we want to use a table. So we have the mass of the carrot before soaking, mass of the carrot after soaking, mass of the carrot after baking, volume of water added. Remember, we started with 10 mils, so you're gonna have 20 mils and then 30, 40, all the way to 100. Notice here also that I have my units in the table, in the, in the heading for the table. So I don't need to write gram, 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 or mils, mills, mills, all the way through, okay? And uh, come on guys, you know you need a title, so write a nice title for the table, okay? Nice title there. Okay, so we press on now. So our treatment of results, what are we gonna do with those results? Get them. Well, first thing you wanna do is you want to subtract the mass of the carrot before baking from the mass of the carrot, before soaking rather, mass of the carrot um, before soaking from the mass of the carrot after soaking. That way you will know how much work was absorbed by the carrot, okay? And then now you want to subtract the mass of the carrot after baking from the initial mass. That way you will know how much water was lost from the carrot from what was present in it, right? In it before soaking, and um, when you soak it. So you're gonna see how much water it costs overall. Um, you may think to yourself, now why didn't I just use a juice extractor? Well, a juice extractor may not extract all the juice that's present, but when you use an oven to dry the carrot, it is a more objective um, answer that you're gonna get, right? Because you're gonna be a, a mass, numbers are objective. Two is two, one is one. Okay, so when you weigh the mass now, you can clearly see how much um, water was lost. And come on, you know, juice is really water. It's the coloring from the carrots or whatever it is that you use. It's just really water. So once you bake it, then you can get the amount of juice there. So you subtract the mass of the carrots after baking from the mass of carrots before soaking. So that's the initial amount. And then we plot a graph. Wow, yeah, we plot a graph here because graphs show trends, guys. So it's easy to read a trend once you have a graph or a table or something like that. So you're gonna plot a graph here of volume of water versus initial mass of carrots minus the dry mass. So the answer that you get for this one up here in red, okay? And um, if you have any difficulty plotting graphs, you can check out my, my video on how to plot graphs. And then you can see the other videos, how to interpret graphs as well. All right, so that's your treatment of results. So we are pressing along quite nicely. So what are some of the limitations and sources of errors here that you may encounter? Well, one, getting carrots of the same mass. Um, you may not be able to do that to, to an absolute. So that could be something that limits your experiment. Then the chemistry of the carrots in terms of soil concentration. Um, so you may get carrots which are the same. You get the carrots from the store or supermarket or wherever and there are same carrots, but the chemistry of each of those individual carrots is different. They have different amounts of salt concentration in them, which means that they're gonna absorb different amounts of water, okay? So that might affect your results, okay? Um, and you're testing how if adding water 
um, affects the amount of juice, not if salt concentration affects the amount of juice. All right, so the age and maturity of the carrots is also something that you can't control because you get them, but you don't know when they were planted, when they were grown, when they were reaped, the process of um, keeping all of those things. They don't know what happened with them throughout. So those things you really can't control. All right, then no. Precautions. And of course, your precautions are safety measures you take to protect yourself and the experiment. Okay. So you're going to try to get your carrots to within plus or minus two grams. Okay. Because we want them to be close in mass. Be sure to dry your carrots to a constant mass. All right. Because you want to ensure every ounce of water leaves the carrot. Um, so probably you need a couple of trials. So you'd probably wait two or three times until you get a constant mass. And come on, guys, you're using an oven. So don't bake off your hands. Use mittens when dealing with oven. All right. And finalement, assumptions. What do we assume to be so, but it may not necessarily be so? And some of those things that we're saying, okay, you know, I hope this is the way it is and not another way, um, so to speak. So the density of the carrots is similar. You're hoping that that is something that's the same, right? The oven with, is without fault. So you're drying your carrots and you're hoping that nothing happens to the oven from one drying to another drying. So, you know, you get good results. And of course, the carrots are the same age and maturity, right? So, well, there you have it, guys. That is it, you know. That is it right there. I hope you found the video helpful. I hope you will like it, share it, and subscribe to the channel, okay? Thank you guys for watching. And remember, at G Squared Academy, excellence is always a good mind. I'll see you guys next time.